Hello class, your next project is going to be to make a about five to six inch jar. So um, to start that, you're gonna start it just like you would start your mug or your bowl earlier in the semester. And I'm just starting with kind of like a hockey puck. Um, and I am just starting in the center and pinching out. And the last assignment, the historic replication assignment, was really good practice for you for this project. You got a lot of coiling experience in, and you're able to probably coil, hopefully, a lot easier. And so I could choose to either make a foot on this or not put a foot on this, but just remember, if you do not put a foot on, we will not be able to glaze the bottom at all. So just kind of keep that in mind and make a choice carefully. So I'm pinching now to kind of get the wall nice and consistent. And then I can simply coil up from there. So I would just keep adding coils to make it taller. Once I get to the top of my jar, there are a few different kinds of lids that you're gonna be making. I know sometimes a lot of people will say to me, why can't I just make a pancake and stick it on top? And the reason is that it won't stay on. It's not, there's nothing holding it in there. And so it's very easy for those to break. So instead, on this first jar, I'm going to, I'm taking, I left it just a little thicker, and I'm making a slight, well, no, not a slight, a pretty substantial angle just using my rib. And now I'm going to make a lid for this. Now I happen to know from measuring it halfway across on the inside part that is three inches. And so I'm making a three inch patty that's kind of dented in the center. All right, I wanna make sure it's, yeah, that's right. So I wanna make sure that it's nice and consistent. And so to do that, I'm gonna just use my paddle to make sure it's really nice and rounded because I want this bottom part to sit right down, nestle right down inside of there. Now, I'm going to very carefully pinch up and out. So this part, this top part of this lid should come up to the top part of this. So that would be four inches across. So I have a little ways to go to create that. And I'm just starting in the center and bringing it out at an angle to create this. And I kind of keep checking the measurement to see how I'm doing as I'm creating this. So what we want is this bottom part to nestle in there and the top part to come up. I can always, if it gets a little long, shorten it. But I'm just going to use my rib and really compress that. Now the edge of this, I'm going to have to work on. All right, let's take a look. It looks like right here it got a little bit big, so I'm gonna remove a little bit of that clay just using my finger, or I could use my lid, because we want that to nestle down inside. And now that does. So now, this is the start to my lid. Of course I'm gonna have to fix this edge, and you know how to do that after fixing the lip of your um, bowl and your mug, and all the other things that you've made in my class. You know, you can use the file, or you can use your green scrubby, whatever you want. Now, I need to make a knob to be able to take this on and off. So you could make one, just remember not to make them too thick. So if they're really thick, you may have to hollow it and poke a hole into it. So I could just make kind of a more basic shape, like maybe this kind of teardrop shape, and add some, make some slip in the center and attach that on because you want to be able to be able pull it off fairly easy. Or I could make something more um, in lines with your animal sculpture. I could make maybe a little bird here just by pinching it. And I could 
Now to kind of sit down a little bit deeper than that. There we go. So I could connect that on there, and that might be a little bit more interesting. Maybe this one's a little bit better. And that would be a little bit way, different way of dealing with that. If at any point you feel like this is too big or it's too tight of a squeeze, use your paddle that is in your toolkit and make it smaller. It's always better if it's just a little bit smaller because this top part will hold it in there. But if it's too big, it's going to run into troubles. There's one that's a little bit tighter squeeze. And I can put that on. Now, for the sides, this one was a little thick when I was pinching it. And so I did something called faceting. And what faceting is, you can use a cheese cutter for this, but I'm just going to use your kite wire cutter tool. And I'm just cutting down, creating these planes. I'm being careful to not go through. I know how thick this is. And I know I'm not going to go through because it's really and truly that thick. And I'm creating these planes. A cheese cutter works really good as well, but I don't have one handy and I'm just going to use this cutting wire. And the kind of cool part about this is it removed weight, but it also made it more interesting. Now out on this outer edge, I'm going to paddle it. And it's going to kind of just kind of bring that edge up a little bit and I'm going to tap it softly underneath so it goes up. Eventually though, this wet floppy lid that I've just made is going to have to um, set up and then I can refine it and then I would have my jar made on that one. All right, Step, come back for another lid video um, in your next link on your PowerPoint.